Hello everybody and welcome to Honor Thy Podcast. This is the weekly DC TV Arrowverse podcast we do here where we discuss everything Arrowverse. I'm your host, Declan McKinney. You may know me as the host of DC TV Talk. And with me as always is my co-host, Dan McCants, otherwise known as Mule Kick Media. Hey, what's up? I'm all good. <laughs> and today we have a guest this week. We uh, started to get a few more guests on the show. Ooh. And today we are going to introduce you to Commie Chris. What's up? Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah. it's awesome to have you yeah um we started to get a few more guests on the show like we had justin a couple weeks back and um so now we decided to get chris on the show a resident dc tv expert here in mm-hmm. the youtube community um and that's pretty appropriate given the fact that some pretty huge news has just dropped which is going to be our big discussion topic this week which is about the upcoming arrowverse crossover which has been officially titled elseworlds but before we get into that we have a few other little pieces of news to discuss uh, it's been a pretty quiet week this week but there is still some cool things out there First off, did you guys see the new Flash set photos from earlier this week? Yes, I did. I've, I yeah. think I've seen some of them, but not all of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just going to add to the, more fuel to the fire of this new Flash suit discussion that, you know, one minute I love the suit, the next minute I absolutely hate it. <laughs> uh, the thing is, I agree with you on that, because I'll say this year, I definitely prefer the season four suit yeah definitely definitely yeah, absolutely 100 percent. but i'm not gonna give my final judgment on this soon until we actually see it in the show yeah live action and also the, another thing that i want to say about the suit is that yeah in the comics he doesn't have the chin strap but but took inspiration from the comics with by removing the chin strap but i think that kind of strap really helps the suit if you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah it makes it feel a bit more rounded and complete yeah because if you if you look at um i'm going to reference captain america in the mcu here in his first of his suit that he wore in the first avengers yeah. movie it didn't have the chin strap and it looked for me that is one of my most hated suits in the entire mcu mm. but if they go to winter soldier age of ultron civil war he has the chin strap and those are a few of my favorite suits in the entire MCU. So I, I I don't know. I think chin straps, they look better in live action rather than no chin straps, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's actually a really mm. interesting comparison. Like, I never actually thought about that, but that's really true. Because, yeah, I agree. I don't like um, Cap suit in the first Avengers film. I think it looks yeah. really uh, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't look good. It looks a bit It looks a bit out of place, mm. you know, in comparison it does. to the other it Avengers. Yeah. Too- it looks too cartoony, too yeah, corny. Yeah, too cartoony, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah that's actually quite an interesting comparison. I mean, I'm so up and down with this suit. Like, so up and down with it. Like, <laughs> one, like I said, one minute I love it, next minute I hate it. And I won't lie, even though, you know, we were both... You know, me and Dan were saying as well that, you know, we do need to wait till we see it in the show before we can make a full judgment. Every trailer that we've gotten, I haven't been impressed with the shots we've seen. However, I will say, these photos that came out, is probably my favorite look at it and i don't know if it's the lighting because the lighting is very very good and very very reflective on the suit so it actually makes the suit look a lot better um and i feel like it pops really well in that light but again then we'll get a shot next week and i'll absolutely hate it again so <laughs> it's just yeah what do you think dan i i don't really, i don't know really because it's like same as you every time i see it in like any form of like leaked set photos or like trailer or promo or anything like that i hate it and then any anytime they release like a proper promotional picture for it I-, I really like it so i honestly don't know i'd probably say i'm hinging more towards not liking the suit i mean like i said i've not seen all the the promotional photos that we got um a few days ago but I- i've seen a few of them of the suit the suit does look better i will give it that but i still worry for how it will actually look you know what what when we actually get the season 5 drops because it's like i just don't know i don't know how to feel about it cuz I, 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 the only thing i will say is i hope that they do take the fans feedback from it and they actually do improve it cuz like like i say the chin strap we've already had like chin strap gate it's been going on for ages and like i'm in the camp that thinks yeah you do need it like you guys said it just it just doesn't work for live action it might work from a comic aspect but just when you put it into live action on screen it just doesn't work and especially with how they've designed the suit to function it it just looks really odd and 
Like, I want to say my judgment for, like I said, when the premiere happens, but at the moment, I'm not really looking forward to it. I, I, I think they should have just kept with the season four suit. I just didn't think there was a real need to, to change this suit, to be honest. Yeah, I'll say the season four suit. I'll say it's one of my favorite suits in the entire CW. Yeah, yeah. I think it's up there with like Supergirl and like Superman's costumes in terms of being like some of the best. Mm. It's just it looks it just looks really nice, especially if there was like some episodes where you know some of the fight scenes and stuff took place in broad daylight, and that suit looks so nice in the day, like with the sun reflecting on it. And I also find it a bit weird because I think I discussed this with you, Dan, a couple weeks ago, but like. You know, if you remember in the Flash season three, there was that 2024 episode. Um, or was it 20? When was it? There was that future episode. It was episode yeah. 19 of season three. And they go where Flash goes forward in time. And his future self had the season four suit. So where does this suit come from? I mean, I assume it's the one that's inside the Flash ring that Nora gives him. So it just seems a bit weird that they've just given him like a new suit immediately a season after. Because I feel like they could have just repaired the suit they had. Um, mm. But anyway, that's a different discussion. But <laughs> yeah. This suit is, it's so mixed oh, yeah. and we just have to wait and see. Yeah. Also, I want to point something out. So if you guys remember, when you go back to all the way to season one, maybe even the finale of season two, where um, Barry goes back in time to the night Nora Allen died, you know that other that other flash that yeah. was there. Yeah. yeah. A different suit. and But, that, but this one, because I'm looking at the picture right now, he has the chin strap. So I'm mm. assuming that they're probably going to change it again mm. after, you know, stick to what you've done before. So if they're going to, if they want to continue on with the continuity, then they're probably going to have to revert back to what they did before. That makes sense. Mm. That does make sense because I mean, Grant Gustin did say pretty much immediately after the suit was revealed that there were going to be changes coming. And also one thing I forgot to write down, let's just pop back into my head now is there's a photo that came out a couple of days ago where Grant Gustin was in the photo in the background in the new suit, but you could see the it had a cowl, like an actual physical cowl, like it used to, like a hood, like it used to be. So maybe that's the change. Maybe that's maybe he's had the change now by this point because they're filming they're filming episode eight now, so they're going into the end of season finales. And like I say, you can see the hood. You can see there's like a physical cowl, and he's in the new suit. So maybe that is the chin strap coming. Yeah, um, maybe. Because if you look at the suit now, obviously the, the headpiece is basically a helmet, but now it's going to go back to the cowl. So I think that's going to work a lot, lot better, a lot better. But yeah, so definitely interesting look. But like we say, we are going to have to wait, really, just until we see it in live action. And even if we don't like it at first, odds are by the mid-season finale, it's going to be changed and hopefully fixed. Mm. Hopefully. So we just have to wait for that. Mm. And then we have... To... Oh, yeah, sir. No, go on. So basically, I was going to say that there's only so many times you can actually change a, a suit, in my opinion. Yeah, before it gets boring. Yeah. So I feel like one more time and then stick with it. Because at this point, like The Flash has more suit changes than Arrow has. And Arrow had like more seasons mm. than Flash. Yeah, because I mean, Arrow's changed its suit three times although i mean the season four to five one was just adding sleeves because <laughs> it was ridiculous oh, yeah. without them. it wasn't really a suit change yeah. no it was just no. adding so but yeah it's yeah i think i agree with that changing the suit all the time gets a bit boring especially in comparison to like supergirl which supergirl's never changed its suit i mean you <laughs> think you can no because... and i don't think you need to necessarily need to is fine yeah, I mean, we are getting that new suit in season four in the early photos, which me and Dan like to joke about. <laughs> I mean, we don't know what that suit is. The Power Rangers suit. Is. Yeah, the Power Rangers suit. Or what, what function that's going to serve, but obviously that suit's not going to last very long anyway. So anyway, moving on, we have got some useful Legends of Tomorrow. We've got some casting news. The actor known as Darian Martin has been cast as, and I quote, a wolf creature in Legends of Tomorrow season four. <laughs> Uh, this actor makes a lot of sense. He's from the 100, which is obviously another CW show. I talk a lot in here about how the CW likes to keep their castings in house, uh, and again, that's very representative here. Mm. So he's been cast as a wolf creature in Legends of Tomorrow. So obviously, Legends of Tomorrow is going to be very s almost supernatural, very uh, fairy tale based next season, which gets me very hyped. Um, but this is interesting because didn't they cast a wolf creature like two months ago? Or was it like, a casting call? 
Yeah, because I remember like I remember a female. I remember a video. There was like a casting video as well for like a female wolf creature. So is this mm. the same character that they gender swapped it or what? Like I don't know what's going on here. I have no idea. And because also they said that this wolf creature was like this uh, character who they cast a couple months ago, or at least the casting call they sent out was going to be a series regular. So I don't know. I I don't quite know what this character is supposed to be or. If no. it's just like a one episode thing, or if it is going to be like a full time member of the legends, but then I guess we concerned because there seems to be quite a lot of new members joining, so because mm. a lot of new series regulars in season four, so I don't know. What what are you guys' opinions on this? I don't. I actually, I don't know because this is the first time I'm hearing this. Because I don't know that with legends. I've said this a few times. It's my it's my least favorite CW show. Oh, oh. oh. No, 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 you are no, going no. up against us here. <laughs> I, I know, I know a lot of people like it. I know a lot of people say it's their favorite, but for me, like, don't get me wrong, I like it. Like, I don't not like it, I like it. It's just favorite out of all of them, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's just, I don't know, I just feel like it's a bit take itself too ser- seriously and yeah that could be a good thing for some people i get that but for me i like shows like arrow that is very serious that's my kind of show because mm-hmm. you know I, i've said this like a million times arrow is my favorite cw show in fact it's my favorite one of my favorite shows yeah the past arrow, arrow is my favorite tv show of all time oh so. i can't say the same thing <laughs> <laughs> like especially especially when we took especially with um season two and season five Mm-hmm. Yeah, every time I every time I talk about season five of our, I just get so, I don't know something, I just get so excited because it was I'm, it was I'm such a good season. Watching season five, um, because me and my dad are doing a, I'm actually showing my dad Arrow for the first time, and uh, we've been watching all of the seasons and apart, we're currently watching apart from five. three and four, you made the wise yeah, choice well, to avoid them. <laughs> Well, we we got about halfway through three, and he was a bit worried about four anyway because I told him it was bad, and he just like he was just like, oh, let's just skip to five. So we went to five. But last night we watched the episode where Prometheus got revealed. Oh, <laughs> oh, so good. And that's one of the reasons why I like Arrow season five so much is because it came off of such a bad season, season four. Yeah, it's just so strong. Yeah, but anyway, um, hold on, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so Darian Martin has been cast as a wolf creature in Legends of Tomorrow season four. Yeah, that's it. So basically, what I was saying is that moral of the story that I wasn't really, I wasn't really keeping up with Legends news. Moral. To be of the fair, story. Legends hasn't really had any news. No, <laughs> it's been quite dead actually over the summer. Like it's, it's been very dead. dead. We literally got a new trailer today for Legends, mm. like a forty-second promo for the first episode. Which is quite interesting. I probably should have included that. Um, we'll jump into that probably in a sec, but yeah, it's we, there. Just hasn't been any legends news. It's easily no. been the most devoid, like devoid of any of them. Mm. So, yeah, it's it's weird because I would have thought, you know, because of how many people really seem to enjoy season three. You know, me and you included, Declan. I would have thought they'd maybe like announce more news for it. You know, for the upcoming season. So it is weird that they've really not announced anything i mean yeah we've had some casting calls but not much in the way of like promotional photos or set photos or or just in general any like kind of cast reveals it's just it's been a bit weird for me and i mean i don't think it's like a worrying sign for season four but it is just strange how little information we've had on it because this has really like been the biggest thing that we've had since comic-con which is crazy yeah like i say we actually got the first proper trailer after Comic Con today, like mm. literally a couple hours ago, um, which I've seen, it's it's pretty cool. Like it does show how weird Legends is going this season, <laughs> even more weird than it did last season. How is that even so, possible? <laughs> but wait until you see the promo. Uh, we also released some promo photos yesterday as well for Episode One, uh, which are pretty cool. Like you get to see uh, something is looking like it's possessing Gary. So oh. I'll see ya. <laughs> I mean, the episode is called The Virgin Gary, so that's obviously amazing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, in, in regards to this character, I don't know what this is going to be. I Obviously, it's got to have a fairy tale link somewhere. Um, I'm hoping it's the big bad wolf, because that would make the most sense. Uh, but whether he's actually going to be a full-time member of the Legends, or if he's just going to be like a one-time thing, a recurring character, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm just a bit confused because of that other casting call we got. 
and I'm guessing maybe they gender swapped it. I don't know. Full like a full member of the legends because the team is already stacked already as it is. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about this yesterday. I was thinking because by the end of season three, there was basically I think six members left. Like it was Sarah, Ray, Mick, Nate, Zari. I think that was it by the end of the season. But now we're getting like obviously Constantine's joining. Then we've got there's another character called Ramona Young who's joining in a series regular position. Then there's like potentially this character. Um, Ava Sharp. Amaya's coming back in the form of Charlie. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, Ava Sharp's joining. Nora, Nora Dark's a series regular next season. So <laughs> there's a lot of like new characters. And it depends on. Because the thing is, I don't think Ava Sharp's going to be a member of the Legends because the Time Bureau is still a thing. Mm. Nora Dark, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. And then the other three who I mentioned are probably going to be. I mean, Charlie, who's Maisie Richardson Seller's character, is going to be a bit of a wild card. So again. The only one who I can actually see out of that list is the Ramona Young character and Constantine. So I guess just have to wait and see. So I guess there is a little bit of wiggle room for new characters uh, to come in, maybe in like another one potentially. So yeah, it's it's all right. But yeah, I do agree. It's getting a bit stacked in terms of Legends cast overall. So mm-hmm. we'll get we'll have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. Um, we also got some casting news for Arrow, and this one I found very very exciting. Uh, so Catherine McNamara, I think McNamara, it. McNamara, McNamara. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Catherine McNamara has been officially cast in Arrow season seven. You may know her from the TV show Shadowhunters. Is that a CW show in the US? No idea. I don't live in the US. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering because I know it's a Netflix exclusive here in the yeah. UK. Yeah, I think it uh, might be CW. It? Might be. I'm not too sure. Wait, was the last name? Last name you said? Did you say Nakamura? He said, I, I said McNamara. I thought he said Nakamura. That's how he. <laughs> don't worry, I corrected him on how he pronounced it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was like a wrestler. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she has been cast in Arrow Season 7 in a recurring role, and she is going to be described as a scrappy street fighter and thief from Star City. Now, in terms of her look, I really like this already. I think it just it looks good, like already. Um, and I think she's a very good actress. I have actually seen a few episodes of Shadowhunters, um, and I think she's very good in that show because she is the lead of it as well. Oh. So to come into Arrow in a lead position onto a recurring role obviously shows quite a lot of gravitas in that sense. But one thing that he, like instantly jumped out to me about this casting is this has got to be Konomi Rhodes. Mm. Got to be Konomi Rhodes. Yeah, it seems the most likely one. Yeah. And based on the description they've given as well, it, it lines up. So if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, Konomi Rhodes was a character who they released in a character description a few months back. They were looking for a character called Konomi Rhodes who was, like, who was another vigilante in Star City, um, another archer based on the video they had. Um, oh, uh, is it, like, is it going to be... Uh, she, they're not going to call her... Me, they're not going to call her this name, but is she like Mia Dearden? Yeah, supposedly she's kind of like a like yeah the Mir Dearden type character, um, which is kind of weird because Thea is kind of that for the show. But yeah, yeah this is, is like an yeah. amalgamation of different characters. Uh, but she is a yeah, new yeah. vigilante in Star City who supposedly could be working with the new Green Arrow, who is obviously likely Roy Harper. So she is going to be a new vigilante who's also going to be going up at odds with the new Team Arrow. So you know with Dinah, Renee, and people like that. Uh, but What's interesting is as well is in that casting video they had a while back, the the scene that they were playing out showed this Konomi Rhodes character interacting with Dinah Drake, and it seems like Dinah was actually being a mentor for her in that scene. So I think this character is sounding really interesting, and it's cool to get a new vigilante, especially because she could potentially be an archer, like we saw in that video. She was having like the bow and arrow pose. So I'm definitely excited about this, and if she's going to be working with the new Green Arrow, like this whole new Green Arrow storyline is really exciting, especially if it is Roy. And based on what Stephen Amell said uh, the other day at the IGN article, he said that it's going to be a new vigilante crew is going to be coming to Arrow. So this she could be a member so like, of this crew. But like a new Team Arrow. Mm. Almost, yeah. So like whoever this new Green Arrow is, he's got his own Team Arrow. And I think that'd be That's really it. exciting. And I feel like this character has got to be Konomi Rhodes and therefore a member of that team. I must say this, that out of all the CW shows, Arrow's the one that's intrigued me the most. That's yeah. coming back. Like, so yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. definitely. I'm the most hyped for that show. Yeah, it is the most interesting because we we don't really know what they're doing or where it's gonna go. Like, because obviously we know Oliver's in prison, but then outside of that, how's that going to really work? So, 
it is very interesting. I, I do agree. Arrow is easily the most intriguing and interesting. Like, you know, <laughs> me and Dan, we don't, we're not exactly kind to Supergirl, but it's just it's on this show. But uh, she, it's just not as interesting in season no. four. No way. I don't think Flash is as interesting either. Although I think Flash looks very good next season. We kind of know where it's going. Yeah. But then Legends and, and especially Arrow, we just don't have a clue. And that's what makes it very interesting. So what did you think of season three of Supergirl then? <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. you haven't been watching our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to let you stay first because I'll be more cruel on it. You're you're the kind of one for season three. Yeah, yeah. basically in terms of me and Dan, the way I described it last week is I'm glass half full, he's glass half empty. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's basically, I think the first nine episodes of Supergirl season three were absolutely solid. I loved it. I, th- I think episode yeah, nine I is like the mid-season finale was phenomenal. Actually, I'll, I'll like I'll say the first ten episodes. Actually, I liked episode ten as well. Um, but for after that, the season just went worse and worse. And the problem is, for me, is that it just became very uninteresting and very unengaging. So I mean, I barely made any Supergirl videos because I just didn't care. And honestly, when the season finale rolled around, I was just like, finally, it's ending. <laughs> I kind of just want to move on to the next season so we can get rid of this whole thing. Um, because the problem is as well, I think they didn't focus on Rain as much as they should have done because Rain was easily the best part of it. But yeah, I'm I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit kinder to it than Dan will be. But yeah, <laughs> I, I love the first like 10 episodes, but then it just kind of went downhill from there. For me. Uh, <laughs> I love I like to throw shade at the fact I'm too cruel to all these shows. Um, I'm kind of the same. Um first nine episodes like i said i think were very good overall there were some in the first half i want too keen on but like overall i really enjoyed it like i said episode nine for me i'd go as far as say it's like easily the supergirl's best episode yeah um by far mm-hmm. it was phenomenal and then it was like after then it just went same for me it just went downhill and it was just that they focused on the wrong areas that i felt like rain should have taken up more of an interest because I mean anybody who liked or wasn't a big fan of the season all agreed on the fact that Rain was a really cool and interesting character and like the duality between her and like her alter ego was really really interesting they just didn't focus on it enough and I just lost interest like they focus on all this stuff with Caramel which I just don't care about and then you've got um oh em- Emma Tremblay. I-, I can't stand oh. her. I cannot. Me and Declan cannot stand her. I just didn't like her character. The actress was awful. Um, yeah. and just and just in general, I felt like especially towards the end, like it just became very noticeable. Like there were two episodes I remember, like I I, I found them so hard to sit through. I think it was the what was it? The gun control episode. <laughs> episode 21. Episode 21. Um, and then there was an episode beforehand where they fought, what was it? That woman who like, I can't remember. It was like that weird cult, but it was led by that woman and she had them powers. Oh, I can't remember that. Yeah, yeah, I just remember watching those episodes. They were like so difficult to get through. And then the finale was just incredibly underwhelming. Um, and uh, yeah, I just lost interest in it completely. It was for me, it was easily the worst out of all the shows. It wasn't terrible, but it was just nothing more for me than average. Like I could, don't think I can honestly rewatch the season, apart from uh, a few of the episodes in the first half. That's pretty much it. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, all I'm saying, don't don't let Ben hear you say that. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean... Secondly, yeah. This is just based on last season. Out of all the shows last season. Scene three Supergirl, I think was the best one. What? I think I think it was the best. Like, out of all the CW, because okay, let's like last season the CW didn't really had didn't really have that. Let's be real, because <laughs> you know the Flash season four was pretty underwhelming. Yeah, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Season six it was okay, but nowhere near season <laughs> five. Yeah. Oh, no. No one is even. <laughs> yeah, Legends, you know how I feel about Legends. Yeah. Um, Black Lightning. Oh, I'm sometimes... oh, Black Lightning's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy Black Lightning. I enjoyed it. Sometimes I don't know uh, Sometimes I don't know how to feel about the show. But yeah, overall, I like Black Lightning. But yeah, it was still... I, I still think it's, it still could have been 
better. So out of all those, out of all the shows last year, I don't. I, that's why I will say Supergirl was the best because, like you said, like you both said, the first few episodes, like the first ten episodes or so, they were, I would say, the best group of episodes of yeah. all the mm. CW shows, and that's why I would say the season, all of them. Uh, yeah, I, I, and I agree with you. Yeah, that it went downhill, but I still enjoyed it more than all the other shows last season. So the thing is, me and Declan would probably have that kind of similar way of thinking about it, but it'd be more towards Arrow because we really enjoyed the back end of Arrow season six. But despite that, like we, we, it's it, like I get what you mean, like because it started off so well, and like with the other shows, you don't you didn't feel like they were as consistently great in like for a bunch of episodes. And that, that was why it's your favourite, like... Yeah. Yeah, I, I can get that. Because, like, me and Declan, with our... Uh, like, the last six episodes of our season six, me and Declan love. I think you can agree with me on that. And that kind of, like, made us a bit... I'd say somewhat biased towards season six, because it's not, it's not like, great by any means. But I think, I think... because it like, ended on such, like, a big note, it kind of, like, clouds your judgment on how to grade it, because... I think everyone could agree that like the ending of our season six was far better than the first, but like I, I get what you mean with Supergirl. Like it did the start of it was very very good. It was just for me, even though I really still enjoyed it, even when it was great, it didn't grab me as much as it probably did for a lot of the other people. And then, like you said, as it just went on, I just lost interest in it completely. I was gonna say the thing about our season six. No, I consider our season five you know, the second best season of any CW show mm. first. So it was, so our season six was coming off of, you know, in my opinion, the second best season of all the CW shows. So said this after the season five finale ended, there's no way our season six is going to top season five. No. So with me, I wasn't expecting season six to be as good as season five. No. That's why I am not as disappointed as some other, because I know a lot of people are a big fan of season six, but for me personally, I'm not. Because mm. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as season five. Yeah. So God, I'm content with what we got, even though it, it definitely could have improved. Yeah. I mean, I didn't expect it to be better just because it's like, it's not the hour of old. And I, even though season five was great, I still didn't have that faith in them. And I think it was just the, the, the main problem with season six was that they just, they, they, they essentially split it right down the middle. You had the J, Ken and James section and the Ricardo Diaz section, and it just didn't work. They should have just gone with one or the other and yeah. you just ended I... up with two different halves of a season that just when you try and, and join them together, they just create this like kind of meh final product. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know, honestly. I, mean, I didn't go into a massive expectations. And I don't think it's terrible. It's watchable. Yeah, yeah, 100% watchable. Yeah. But another thing I'll say about Arrow Season 6 is that the finale, like a finale in my opinion. Then catch that. Did you say it was the strongest or weakest? I was, I was saying that it didn't feel like a finale. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Um, yeah. So, I could kind of agree with that. I, yeah, cause it, it kind of more felt like a setup for, yeah. for season yeah. seven. Yeah, because it didn't. Because to me, it didn't. I didn't feel like we had any closure. Mm. If you know anybody. Yeah, because I mean, they didn't stop Diaz. He's still out there. And like, yeah, yeah. I get. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess because after season five and the finale that they had there. They probably just tried to go for something different. Yeah, I, I, and to some extent, it doesn't feel like a finale, but I still really enjoyed it because of where it ended off and like what it ultimately, you know, is going to lead into this season. But then again, that's just me being a Arrow fanboy because me and Declan just loved the finale. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, just to give my sort of impression on season six, I, I'm quite with you, Chris, in the sense that I didn't expect it to be, you know, as as close to season five, and I actually. I, I'm a lot more kind to season six on the most part because I actually, <sighs> <laughs> Shut up. I, I, because I actually really enjoyed season six pretty much the entire way through. Oh think, my god! I think it is pretty inconsistent <laughs> in the first half, but I just think it did deal with some interesting ideas. Uh, <laughs> and even though it didn't execute them all well, you know, I mean, I think Vigilante is one of the most underwhelming things ever. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was so disappointed with that, but you know, I still enjoyed it for the most part. And 
you know, I, I think it's a pretty, I think it's a good season of Arrow. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed season six, but yeah, yeah, I do agree with the fact that it did feel slightly like a setup, like a, you know, just for season seven to kind of hold us over to do the storyline they really wanted to do. Um, so yeah, but I feel like you know if we had to get through that to get to season seven, I'm fine with it. No, oh, you said it okay, was so... good. You said it was okay, good. Okay, so so what is your favorite episode of Arrow? Ever? Leon, yeah. Yeah, Leon, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the finale of season five, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not only is the fa- my favorite episode of Arrow ever, it's my favorite episode of any show of all time. Wow, Ooh, that's bold. To be honest, I might be on the same page. Nah, I'd say Ozymandias Breaking Bad. Nothing beats that. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I agree with that in the sense because obviously, I mean, Arrow is my favorite show ever. So you know, the fact because that season five finale is so well put together in the sense that you know you had it's the yeah. perfect culmination to the five years because it ties up the flashbacks, it ties exactly. up Oliver's five year journey. Like it was just it was so well executed in that sense. And even For just me, the fan yeah. service as well, like Deathstroke was came back, Malcolm Merlin came back, Captain Boomerang came back. Like they just had all these different elements just clashing together, and the the ending as well, like the cliffhanger. End, oh my Jesus Christ! Oh, I, I can talk about this. I can literally talk about this all day. But let me just <laughs> summarize my feelings. So it had like okay. So what I, one of the things I love most about the finale of my favorite villain of all time, Deathstroke, it had Deathstroke. And the tension as well, building up to the climax yeah. when, yeah, it was just so tense. Like, in fact, I recorded a reaction video to it. It's on my channel somewhere. Um, like, I was literally on the edge of my seat. Like, especially when Oliver, especially when Adrian f- was forcing Oliver to choose between the people on the island or saving his son. Like, I literally did not know how it was gonna go. Like, I, I generally thought that could actually die like, I, I did i literally did oh, not man. know what they would do god yeah so i love i love everything about the episode it's just yeah it's just something else man it was, it was special oh, <laughs> and also we got and, and also we got the return of uh moira queen as well oh, yeah god. yes anytime moira comes back i just like i miss moira so much yeah i, like, <laughs> I miss I moira miss... so much yep <sighs> oh and I've just realized this is a massive tangent. We started talking about Arrow castings and then we started <laughs> about, like, discussing Arrow and like our favorite episodes. Uh, <laughs> so we should probably get back on track. But I mean, I, I love talking about Arrow. So it's much better than ever. Um, but we do have one final piece of news and this is related to the crossovers. This will feed into our main discussion. But we do have the official casting for what many people are speculating to be the big bad of the season. And that is going to be Jeremy Davis, who has been officially cast as Dr. Destiny. I think I think we brought this up last week, actually. Uh, but there's been some more developments on that front. So when when we discussed it last week, Dan, we, we basically said through the description what it is. So this guy is actually a doctor at Arkham Asylum. Um, and he's, the description says, Dr. Deegan, though he might just be crazier than the inmates he treats, as such, his machinations will draw Green Arrow, The Flash, and Supergirl to Gotham City. So that's the description. And he's going to be played by Jeremy Davis, who's from Lost. Um, so yeah, this is very interesting. The fact he's going to be playing a doctor in Arkham Asylum, we're getting Arkham name drop there, which hints that we could see Arkham maybe for a scene, mm. which would be cool. But if you recognize the name Doctor Deegan, or more specifically John Deegan, there is a character in the comics, John D, who is Doctor Destiny. So a lot of people are saying that Doctor Destiny is going to be the big bad of the crossover. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I'm not going to lie, I've never heard of Dr. D before. I'm not going to lie. But I need to research him more to see, to give an opinion on that. I'm trying to remember now. It's, it's interesting. I, I know what he looks like because he's got, he's, he's the guy with like the hood into with the skull face. I know I know who he is, but I've never like read anything like DC related yeah. with him in it. But I mean, it's interesting, especially with the fact that they reference, like you said, Arkham. So hopefully we can maybe see Arkham Asylum. Even though they'll probably just use the set that they use for all the prisons and all the CWDC shows, it'll probably just be the same thing. But it'd be interesting to see it. Like I said, just so long as it, if we could see Arkham Asylum, you know, and expand a bit more of a, of like Gotham, you know, when we, we go to it in the crossover, that would be cool. Uh, in terms of a villain, don't know because, like I said, I've not read anything with him in it, but it sounds interesting. 
So we're going to dive into our main topic discussion for this week, and it's going to basically just be a big discussion on a news piece. We got a big news drop just a couple of hours ago, which was giving us our title of the upcoming Arrowverse crossover, and it's going to be officially titled Elseworlds. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's weird because Elseworlds, to me, you know, obviously when you look at it in, in the over, overworld DC comics, is obviously it's offshoots. It's just random stories that aren't part of the main DC continuity. So, you know, something like Gotham by Gaslight, something like that. So what does this mean for the shows? What could potentially happen is that I'm going to be our versions of Flash, Green Arrow, and Supergirl. It's going to be another world version. Because oh. then they're free to do whatever they like. Because is because you know the reason why they do elseworlds they can do whatever stories they like yeah. it doesn't yeah. affect the main continuity yeah they, that's they, what i think yeah that's what i think they want to do with this um with superman and supergirl they're not a part of the earth one so what i think what i think they're gonna do is that they're gonna go to another earth this earth has everyone on the same earth like supergirl superman batgirl all everyone is they're going to be on that earth yeah i've i've seen a lot of people speculate about that in the sense that they are just going to do it this is literally going to be an elseworld arrowverse story where everyone's in there because then they have the freedom to do whatever they want they can literally just kill main characters if they wanted to which would be really interesting if they just like killed flash halfway through it or something like that um then again you see no no go on mm. correct me if i'm wrong but i'm sure they've already confirmed that batgirl's gonna also appear in later episodes of arrow this season as well other than the crossover well they've said I'm that sure. the batwoman i think they said that she has room and opportunity to go into the other shows i don't think they specified arrow but they said that they have obviously it would be her arrow if it was going to be any of them yeah um so i think they said they have the flexibility to introduce her and implement her into other episodes of the shows so yeah i mean that is possible batgirl or bat batwoman is i think i, I, think I, I meant batwoman i think i said batgirl. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's interesting i mean one thing i'd like to sort of put forward and you know i hate to be a debbie downer but could this be just a fun title they've come up with because let's be honest like crisis on earth x it's obviously a play on crisis on infinite earth i know there is a crisis on earth x story out there there was like an early jsa story but obviously it's their play on crisis on infinite earth and it was nothing to do with that at all and again a good comparison is i brought this up in my video about it but like the marvel films in the mcu like when you look like age of ultron for example in the mcu that's nothing like the age of ultron story it's just a yeah. cool title yeah same yeah. same with like infinity wars quite different civil wars a little bit different so could this be a cool title they've come up with? Probably could be. Yeah, that that's probably the most likeliest yeah. scenario. It's just, it, it's very strange. And But to be honest, the more I think about it, the more I'm actually going towards the Elseworlds theory, like the fact that th this could be a random thing. Because, obviously, if they do introduce Batman in this crossover, they can do that, really, when you think about it. If this is an Elseworlds story, they can just do that for, like, this three-episode thing and never bring it up again never do it again and they don't have to worry about it and with that as well the crossover this year is episode nine instead of episode eight so it's right at the end of the season so you know every every show will have their mid-season finales beforehand all their main stories can be capped off for the year and then we can just have this at the end as like a random thing at the end so even though i was a bit put off by the whole elseworlds thing at first the more I think about it, the more likely it seems. And a lot of people are saying, like, especially Stephen Amell, he's saying how crazy this crossover is going to be. Maybe this is what he's talking about. Hmm. We, just, we just have to wait and see. We actually yeah. just have to wait. Yeah, I think the thing that, like, interests me is that, obviously, if they go with this Elseworlds, you know, way of telling it and not necessarily connecting it to the other shows, it'd be interesting, but the only thing I would have is that the reason that they like to have these crossovers is so they have these characters that you care about and put these them in these situations where it's awesome you know you get to see them all like kick ass with each other but i just feel like if you're gonna do an elseworlds with a crossover that's cool and all but i I'm, i don't know if you'd have the same attachment to them because they're not necessarily the same versions of the characters 
that you've come to know and love from all the other shows. That's the only thing I'd kind of see as a bit of like a negative towards it. Yeah, I can yeah, see I, that. But yeah. I feel like maybe they ha they've gotten to the point now where you know they've done so many of these crossovers now that maybe they feel like they're open to a bit more experimentation. Like, because Crisis on Earth X, they're never going to go bigger than that. I don't think. Like that was huge, and you know all the characters they had there. Because even like you know when you look at like Invasion, it was very in terms of like all the characters they have from the different shows. It was pretty much just the main players. Whereas Crisis on Earth X, they had like you know they brought in Win. I mean it was Earth X Win, but you know they brought in Win from Supergirl. You had like the new Team Arrow you know and things like that so they were never going to get bigger than crisis on earth x i don't think they had to scale it down and this could be their way of doing it as well just doing it a completely separate thing hmm. i think it's i think it's very interesting to discuss because yeah like i say if they do an else world story they can do whatever they want and this is it could be a cool way to introduce superman and you can do that and just have that version of superman team up with supergirl no problem whatsoever you can have batman come in if you want you know because as well one thing i would talk about with batman is that you know gotham has the tv rights to, to any batman character pretty much but gotham's now ending so do they have a lot more freedom to do that because if you notice as well they announced the batwoman show pretty quickly after gotham was cancelled by fox no after they renewed it for a final season We've got to correct this Declan. sorry sorry, sorry. <laughs> but yes in other words cancelled by fox no so... it wasn't cancelled <laughs> what do you call it then <laughs> renewing it for a final season tons of shows do that that's not cancellation ending, ending. nah um, nah reason <laughs> So, yeah, they announced that pretty rapidly after they cancelled it. So what would they, you know, have they got a lot more freedom in that sense to kind of do Batman and they can do it in this, in this say, in, in this Elseworlds story? Hmm. And like I said, yeah. Wayne Enterprises is in the poster. The question you have to ask yourself, would Warner Brothers allow CW to do Batman? Uh, I mean, the thing is, I would say no. But the thing is, I get I get so confused with the whole Warner Brothers thing because it seems like they have no, you know, they have no line because I don't know where the line stops because obviously we could have two flashes, that's apparently no problem, but then we can't have two death strokes. No, the thing is, the funny thing about this, I recorded a video like a few months ago for for some reason I still haven't uploaded it. I still plan to upload it, Sandra, but it's basically um me complaining or giving a mini rant about how the dc shows and don't allow certain characters to be on screen to be to appear in the shows and that kind of hurts what the shows kind of do yeah yeah so so it's gonna be up eventually but i, I recorded it months ago yeah it's it's, it's really annoying because especially like for me and i'm sure this annoys you as well is slade yeah you know? Slade is one of the best characters in Arrow and they can't use him anymore. That's why they only had two episodes to finish off his arc in season exactly. six and then he just left because they can't do anything with him. And the most annoying one, in, I think, in the history of the Arrowverse was the Suicide Squad. Yeah. The way they set up the Suicide Squad in mm -hmm. season two, season three, it was so good. And like that version of the Suicide Squad was brilliant. It was dark. It was gritty. It, it was really better. Felt than, like it was better squad. than the Suicide Squad we got in yeah, the film. They <laughs> had to cancel it, but they had to cancel it because of the movie. And you know that's why they had to kill off Deadshot in season three because they just had to get rid of it. And it's such an annoying thing that you know, especially Very because good. this may be biased, but I think the CW shows are better in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So I find yeah. it incredibly annoying. I mean, obviously the films they do have standouts, like obviously Wonder Woman's great, and I think Man of Steel's decent. But you know, for the most part, I think the CW shows are a lot better. And the fact that they are restricting them is very annoying. Now, in regards to Batman, obviously the Batman film has been waiting to get off the ground for such a long time, but it seems like it might be finally getting somewhere now. Like you know, it seems like uh, Matt Reeves has handed in the script. Warner Brothers are very happy with it, so it seems like that could be happening. It, I saw a news report yesterday that was talking about how it could be eyeing for a summer 2019 uh, production start date, hmm. which is could mean for like a late 2020 release, which would be pretty cool. Um, so, who knows? <laughs> it's really difficult. Yeah, it's 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 weird. I mean, I don't know because I guess with the whole state that the DC using at the moment, you know, with Batman, you know, the whole Ben Affleck fiasco that just won't fucking go away, and then like with Gotham ending. 
I think maybe, yeah, that kind of opens the bridge for the CW to maybe incorporate more like you know, Batman mythos or even having Batman maybe on the very slim chance like appear. I think that's definitely possible during this state, but I don't know if you'd get that same opportunity, you know, once, I don't know, maybe, you know, you know, once Matt Reeves' Batman properly heads into production or something like that. So I think it could happen, but I think it's like a, it's like you've got a very limited time span to probably use him, and I don't think they'd ever be able to like get him on for like a multiple appearance. It's like it'd probably just be the one thing and it's done. Mm. But then again, you have to think. Um, have you seen the bat, the leap back suit for Titans? Yeah, I've seen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could say that they're starting to play nice with the TV shows or, you know, anything other than the movies regarding a live action Batman. They're starting to with Titans. But the thing is, is that, is he actually going to be, or is he just going to be like a shadowy figure? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. They better not just show it from the back or just show like a shadow because... Yeah, if they were gonna... I think it will be because when you look at that suit, it's not great. <laughs> it's, it's it's incomplete. It doesn't look right. So obviously they're not going to put too much work into it because they're just going to be. It's just basically going to be a silhouette. I guarantee you that now. Batman is not showing up in that show. Like, yeah, if I was to put money on it, yeah, it'll be it'll be like what Superman was in Supergirl season one. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what it'll be. And also, one thing to bring up is this is literally news that is breaking just now. I don't know if this is the casting that Mark Guggenheim was on about because I was just about to bring this up. It Mark better, Guggenheim it better not big be. castings to come today, but there has just been a casting released for uh, the actor. Hang on, <laughs> this is I'm just getting this up right now. Um, so La Monica Garrett has been cast as the Monitor. Does anybody know who that villain is? Nope. <laughs> I mean, so sounds like a, so yeah. There's he's just there's a picture of him in this news report article. So we were talking about the big bad a minute ago. Maybe this is the big bad. <laughs> I think it is. I think this has got to be the big bad for the season now. Doesn't maybe really not sound... a side character. Doesn't really sound like a big bad name. Looking at this picture of him from the comics, I think it could be. He looks. He looks a bit like the Krang from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I don't really have an opinion on the matter because I don't know anything about the character, but... Same. I've never heard of him until now. I've never even seen him until now. Yeah, do, do you think this is the big bad? You, I'm just going to have a look at this guy on IMDb. <laughs> I think this is the mm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossing over with the Arrowverse. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, Wikipedia, got... now, his powers... <laughs> Thing it says that his powers are not well defined but comparable. Hold on, vast cosmic powers, energy, and matter manipulation, incalculable strength and durability, reality warping. Mm. Well, that kind of lines up with Dr. Destiny if they were going to do that, or like a flash villain. Mm. That's very interesting. Mm. He's got quite a good filmography on IMDb in terms of a lot of the TV shows and like big movies as well. Um, so he seems like a decent actor as well. Um, it's, I don't know, like this is weird because this is literally coming out right now. I really hope this is all the casting that Mark Guggenheim's on about because, you know, we're all expecting Batman. <laughs> um, but I'm just trying to find out the thing. What did he say? Such big casting news coming today. So he doesn't yeah, specify is... how many that is. This is probably it then. Oh, that's a bit underwhelming. What a, <laughs> what a crap reveal. Oh, well, you heard it here first. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know about this villain. Like, that's quite interesting. Like you say, I mean, he seems like a very unknown villain, given that you just looked him up and there's not really much about him. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Um, also, is one it... thing I want to discuss... Oh, go on, Chris. It's not... He's not going to be the villain for Arrow Season 5. Oh, no, Arrow Season 6. Oh, wait. Arrow Season 7. <laughs> <laughs> No, definitely yeah, not. because it says um, it's, um, it's going to be the, the villain for the crossover. Yeah, he is. He's definitely the crossover villain. Yeah. Um, now, one thing I want to discuss that I brought up a while ago that really disappoints me about this crossover, above all else, is that Legends is not a part of it. Now, obviously, Chris, you've already discussed that. Obviously, Legends is not your favorite, but for me and Dan, I, I 
I honestly feel like Legends, not having them in this crossover is a huge missed opportunity. Yep. Because they're such good characters and their rapport with the others is so funny. And what really disappoints me is the fact that obviously Constantine is a member of the team for season four. So he's not going to be able to sort of reunite with Oliver and also meet the other members of the Arrowverse. I think that's a really big missed opportunity. Yeah. I agree with you. It's a missed opportunity. But then again, you have to think legends are a team. There's so many characters on that team. So, you know, you, I, I get why they did it. They want to. Yeah. Mm, I get why they did it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if they're doing, like, Elseworld as well, if that is the case, it would be quite weird, maybe, to see the Legends, because I feel like they are trying to scale down, like I said, the amount of characters they have this year, because they kind of just want to take Green Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl, Superman, and then, obviously, they want to focus on Batwoman. So, obviously, if you had all the Legends in there, that would be taking quite a lot of attention away from it, but just, obviously, as a fan of Legends, it's really disappointing, because, like I said, I really want to see Constantine come to play within the greater Arrowverse, and also, I love the interactions between Sarah and Oliver. Every anytime Sarah gets to come back and interact with Oliver, like I loved her in the season six finale and things like that. You know, I always love those moments. So it's a shame, but I guess it kind of works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But is there, is there anything else about this crossover? Because, like I said, I feel like the Elseworlds thing is so different and so surprising as well. Because when I first read it, I was kind of just like, "What really?" <laughs> but I feel like the most likely thing here is the idea that they are going to do this this completely offshoot. Because like I say, if they're going to do episode nine as the crossover this year, which they are, it makes perfect sense for them to just kind of maybe just have some, maybe they just want to have some fun with it and just go, right, let's just do this thing so we can do whatever we want. We have the entire, the world is our oyster. Let's just go for it. And I feel like that's what they are really aiming for. But the biggest question this raises, what is happening with Batwoman? Where is she from? and what's going on yeah. because if she is part if this is elseworlds does that mean that the entire batwoman show which we know is happening is in a completely different universe <laughs> gonna be no it's definitely gonna be that will probably worst case scenario will be on a different earth won't be so it'll be a part of the arrowverse but you know maybe on a different earth but i feel like with the setup they've given to batwoman so far and at least within gotham like they've they've name dropped gotham a couple times they've obviously name dropped bruce wayne it seems like they're setting up for batwoman to be on earth one so and of course the thing is with the difference between like say batwoman and supergirl is obviously supergirl took place you know in season one was on a different network so when it came over this whole different earth thing makes sense it was just like a way they could write it into the arrowverse um Mm -hmm. whereas batwoman is going to be on the cw from day one so they can do that they can literally stick it on earth one and i know people will bring up oh well black lightning's not you know it's not even in the arrowverse or whatever but i feel like black lightning they just want to keep standalone like i was convinced this year's crossover was going to be black lightning <laughs> like before I, any of this stuff i think black lightning will eventually cross over with them eventually that'd be a huge missed opportunity if they don't like it's fine if you want to like just do a supergirl with that just put it on a different earth that's fine but at least cross them over once because you know you need to do that but yeah, in regards to Batwoman, I feel like it's got to be on Earth 1 just because of the amount of, or at least Earth 38 because they've got to do something. And if it's just on a complete Elseworld story, then I feel like what's the point? Mm. And then this crossover is going to feel like it's purely there to set up the show that's not even going to cross over ever again. So I just find it a bit strange and a bit odd like if they do that. And obviously there's no confirmation about this. Like There's nothing to actually hint at the fact that they're doing this, but... It just worries me the fact that if they are going to do Elseworlds and they have this Batwoman setup, then that would that must mean that Batwoman is going to be in this complete other offshoot universe, and that's very strange. Yeah, very, very, very weird. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Like I say, I would prefer it if it, like if if it wasn't Elseworld, just because it would help tie Batwoman more onto Earth One, because that's where I think it would best suit it for it to work, both in terms of Batwoman and the crossover. Um, but I, at this point, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I I don't know how to feel about this crossover in a way, because it can go either of two ways. It's either can be like really, really cool and interesting, or it could just flop really bad, because just with some of the stuff that they're saying, you know, with it, just like everything's been so up and down for it. I mean, the, 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 the Batwoman casting, Legends not being in it, stuff like that, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's weird. 
Yeah, and there's there's so many elements that kind of, you know, because they are really capitalizing on the fact they've got Gotham, because obviously Nora Freeze is being introduced, who is being played by Cassandra Jean, who is Stephen Amell's wife. And then they're introducing Lois Lane in the crossover as well. So the, there's like so many elements at play. So, you know, they're talking about scaling down, but then they're introduced, but then Superman's in it. So it, it's very, like, I, I don't quite understand what, what they're going for with this. I don't quite see, because at least like with Invasion and Crisis on FX, I knew where they were coming from. But with this, I don't quite know what the point is. I don't quite understand why they're doing this. Now, of course, this is all purely speculation. We don't know anything about this. But one pe- another thing that you could argue is that maybe Batwoman does take place on its own Earth, and hence why it's called Elseworlds. But then... You know, Crisis on Earth X took place on a different Earth for, you know, a, a part of it. And that didn't make a big thing about it. And also, one thing that people point, have pointed out is that the Elseworlds logo that they use on the poster is exactly the same, or like, you know, a good replica of the Elseworlds logo from the comics. So it does hint towards that. Personally, if, you know, if I'm just going to give my personal opinion, if I was to choose how this is going to play out, I would like this to be an Elseworlds story just because I want to see how they handle it and what they do with it, just to have some fun. But then it does worry me for the repercussions of the Batwoman show. That's the only thing that's kind of putting me off. But if I was to cut that out, I think the whole Elseworlds idea, you know, just having our actors play these characters, but different versions, they have the freedom to whatever. Like, what about what about if we get like a really comic book accurate Green Arrow? Like truly comic book accurate, like with the hair, the beard. He's funny. Like they do like a really funny, jokey Green Arrow. I would love to see that. I'll be down for that. I'll definitely be down for that, hundred percent. Yeah, and then you could do other stuff as well. Like obviously, Supergirl could be different. You could do Flash, which is different. But they have so much opportunity there. Just again, the world is their oyster. They can do whatever they want with this freedom. So, if I was to choose, I would definitely like to see an Elseworlds story. What would you? What What would you choose if you could? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. To be honest, um, in terms of Elseworlds story, I don't know because. I don't really read much into Elseworld. The only one that I really know of is, you know, Batman Gotham by Gaslight, because that's obviously probably like one of the more famous ones. So I don't really know, to be honest. I think it'd be more interesting if they could maybe, like, make something that's a bit more, I'd say something original. I mean, maybe based off of a, of a few things, but I think it'd be cooler if they did something original, and then that way it wouldn't be as predictable. Like, if they're going to do Elseworld, like, actually take risks, you know, and stuff like that. That'd be the thing I want to see. If you're going to do Elseworld, don't play it safe. Like, actually use the Elseworlds, you know, setting to your advantage and, you know, do things that you wouldn't simply get the chance to do on any of the other shows in any, like, generic episode. That's all I'd really say. But in terms of story, I, I can't really say much because I don't really read much of the Elseworlds stories. Yeah, I see what you're saying there in the sense, you know, don't just make this another Earth, basically. Because, you know, you can do... Because that's basically what this would be if they didn't change it up significantly. If they just say, you know, to go back to the Green Arrow, for example, if the, if Oliver's basically exactly the same as he would be on Earth 1, what's the point? So if you do an Elseworlds story where you could make him a bit more comic accurate, make him funny, make him smarmy, that's fun. And I, I think Stephen Amell would be up for that as well, just to kind of play Because Stephen Amell's actually quite a funny guy, and he doesn't really get to show it much, well, hardly at all on Arrow, because obviously Oliver's so dark. So it'd be fun to kind of play with that. So if they have the freedom to just do whatever they want i think again you, like you say use it to their advantage to just go wild just just go for it and you know see what the fans like and see what they don't like um but what, what do you want to see chris um i can see where i can see where both of you are coming from um the way i see it that i would like to see like you know a standalone elsewhere like on another world where they're completely different. I would like to see that, but at the same time, I would like to see those, you know, crossover, if that makes sense. Because seeing Superman crossover with our Flash, our Green Arrow, I would like to see that as well. Yeah. So with that, so if we see that, then, you know, that's something that I'll be very happy with because, you know, you, you're seeing Superman interact with Green Arrow on the and the Flash on TV. That's something that you probably could happen because of you know the movies stuff like that. But yeah, we are gonna get it. 
but I'm saying that I would like to see it with our with the ones that we're familiar with. Yeah, I, I, that's a fair point because I think a lot of people are really banking on the idea of you know Superman and the Flash crossing over on TV because I think people, especially like Grant Gustin, I know was saying that he really ex is excited to work with Tyler Hecklin to play Superman alongside him. So yeah, I can see what you're saying with that front that you want the real characters to you know cross over with each other because it has more yeah. meaning to it. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting and you know I was very confused when they first revealed this. I mean, in regards to when we're going to see footage. I mean, they're all filming their mid-season finales at the moment. I know Flash is moving into its mid-season finale. Um, I think Legends is as well. Arrow will be soon. So, you know, with that, we'll be getting the episode nine filming very, very soon. And therefore, we might get the first few set photos. We might get a first few couple of reveals. And then when did they release? Does anybody remember when they released the trailer for Crisis on Earth X? Uh, no, I, think it, I think it came out like was maybe it? a few weeks before it ended. Like for some reason, like October kind of rings a bell, um, maybe November. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna look this up now just to see when they release this trailer because yeah, I want to get a good I, I idea. Swear, I think it was late October if I remember correctly, and then it was like they spent most of November like slowly releasing more and more like promotion. It was the twentieth of November they released it. Twenty for November, God. I felt like it, it was, was like earlier than then. I thought it was yeah, earlier it felt a lot then. earlier. I remember because they released the poster for it. Well, actually, around this time it was September. So yeah, that's about right. So I guess it is just kind of following the format. So I guess maybe late November is when we can expect it, which I guess kind of makes sense because obviously it is a TV show at the end of the day and it only films things, you know, a few weeks in advance. And especially with the crossovers, it's so much to, you know, put together and edit. And obviously we know how long it takes to film the crossover because uh, it does take them a very long time. Like if they're only starting filming it now and air into December, obviously that kind of is very telling. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think we just have to sort of wait probably till November till we get a trailer. And then obviously that will be a very interesting episode of the show when we discuss that. Because um, then we'll actually be able to talk about it properly. But Because then hopefully by then we'll all know what they're officially doing. We'll be able to see if Ruby Rose has improved her acting by then. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, can only, we can only hope. <laughs> to be honest, I'm a bit more open to having Emma Tremblay play Batwoman at this point. <laughs> and then just... You know, have the actor who plays William play Batman? Because <laughs> you know, if you're if you're gonna ruin it, you know, you might as well, you know, eat it as well. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of our discussion, and it also brings us to the end of the show. Make sure you tell us in the comments what you think about this crossover, because, like, I say it's very interesting. This is the first thing we've properly got about the crossover, like official. Um, so make sure you let us know everything you think about this in the comment section down below. And we'd also like to say a big thank you to Chris for joining us on this episode. You've been awesome. It's been great to have you. And you're very welcome to come back anytime that you like. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed myself here. I'm really excited to be back for next time. Yeah. Whenever, you know, just come back when, whenever you like it. <laughs> you can come back whenever you want. Drop it uh, whenever so, you feel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So thank you guys for listening to this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please share it around with anybody who you believe may enjoy the DC TV and also any other podcast that you think people may enjoy. I completely messed that up. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> so anyway, we're just going to ride that out with style and we hope to see you guys again next week. See you.